Hallelujah. 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 Lift up your hands in the house. Lift up your hands in the house. Come on. Come on and worship him. Come on and worship him now. Worship him. Worship him. Oh, worship. My God, thank you. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Thank you. Glory to God. Come on and speak to him. Worship and speak to him. Speak to him. Tell him how much you love him. That he's worth more to you than in silver or gold, more than any earthly possession. That there's nothing in this world that can compare with Jesus Christ. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. 
We were born to worship him. We were born to praise him. And we bless him today. We bless him today. The Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending. He was, which is, and is to come. Jesus Christ, the Holy One of Israel, the Messiah, the Balm of Gilead and the Rose of Sharon, the Bishop of our soul and the Good Shepherd, the branch of righteousness, the true vine, the living water, the bread of life, the wheel that's in the middle of the wheel, our provider and our way maker, our sustainer, our firm foundation, our firm foundation. My God, the earthquake might have had been a 4.8 shaken, but our foundation is firm. Our foundation is firm. Glory be to God. It doesn't shake and it doesn't move. We're planted on the rock. And that rock is Jesus Christ. And we give him the glory today. And we bless him today. And we exalt him today. He is the God that healeth thee. The on your throat. The on your throat. Glory to God. I bless your name, Jesus. Hmm. Jehovah Rapha is in the house. The God that healeth thee. He's here. He's here. He's here. He's here. And he just doesn't come to do nothing. He's here to do something. The Spirit of the living God is in this house today. Glory be to God. To heal, to deliver, and to set free. My God, and we bless him today. And we exalt him today. Oh, for he is great and greatly to be praised. He knows exactly what we need. When you walk through the door today, he knew exactly what you needed. All he wants you to do is just worship him. Show him that you are grateful for all that he has done. That you're grateful. That we are a grateful people. A grateful people. What he has done for you and I, what no man could ever do. And we thank him today that he has allowed us to behold another day. He has allowed us to behold his handiwork one more time. To be in the land of the living. Amen. Glory to God. How he watched over us during the night while we slept because he never sleeps nor does he slumber. The battles that he fought on our behalf last night. My God, our God, your God. He's great. Oh, he is great. When you think about his goodness and all that he has done for you, glory be to God. There should be a stirring in your spirit when you think about Jesus Christ. When you think about how he made ways out of no ways for you. How he has touched your body and healed you. My God, when medicine couldn't do it. Morphine couldn't do it. Tylenol couldn't do it. Advil couldn't do it. All oh, but when you called on the name of Jesus, the Jehovah Rapha, the God that healeth thee. My God. Oh, when you call on his name, that name which is above every other name, the name of Jesus. In him we live, we move, and we have our being. My God, it's because of Jesus that the blood is yet running warm through your veins. That you have breath in your lungs. That you have the activity of your limbs. It is because of Jesus that you're in your right mind. Some of you should have lost your mind through all that you have been through. But God. But God. Oh, he's marvelous. <laughs> oh, yes, he is. He's marvelous. He's marvelous. He's marvelous. He's marvelous. 
He's marvelous. Jesus. My God. Iki and Arabosa Kanda Ebeshi. Oko the Bobo Shake and Arabosa Kane, K and Arabosa Kane. Hey, Jesus. I love you, my Lord. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I love you, glory be to God. Thank you that you're long suffering, Jesus. <laughs> oh, thank you that you're long suffering. My God, my God. That you put up with us, my God, when we act crazy. Because your love, your agape love, my God, passed a multitude of sins. My God, Jesus, we love you today. For this is the day that you have made. And we will rejoice. And we will be glad in it. Oh, yes. This is a blessed day. This is a glorious day. This is a magnificent day. This is the day that God has made. Man had nothing to do with it. God made this day. Glory be to God. And he made it for a reason. There's purpose for you and I today. He does nothing by chance. Nothing by accident. He's not like Lotto. He has a purpose in what he does. And it was formed before the foundation of the world that you would be in this house today. For whatever reasons that God has for you. Whatever reasons. He's a purposeful God. He's a purposeful God. And he loves us. Glory to God. Oh, how he loves us. That he gave his only begotten son. That we could have life today and have life more abundantly. Oh, he loves us. He loves us. He loves us. Oh, Jesus, he loves us. He loves us. And it just ain't now. He says that while you were yet sinners, <laughs> Jesus died for us. Glory be to God. He loves us. He loves us. He loves us. While we was in our mess, doing what we was doing, he loved us. He loves us. And God bless you, Jesus. God bless each and every one of you. I thank God that the atmosphere in here, glory be to God, is set for whatever God wants to do. We thank God for that. We just give him the praise and the glory and all the honor. He is magnificent. And we greet you in that name which is above every other name, the name of Jesus. Our soon coming King, the Messiah, the Holy One of Israel, our blessed hope, our strength and our joy, our peace and our salvation. He's a mighty deliverer. Yes, he is. He's a strong deliverer. And we bless him this morning. We greet you in his name, the name of Jesus. Co-Pastor White, Pastor Boyle, Pastor Boylan, Pastor Martin. We just give you the praise, the glory, every leader, every minister, every evangelist in the house. We greet you, every saint. We greet you, and we thank God for you. We thank God for those who are viewing us on YouTube right now, and we praise God for you. You could have turned to any other, my God, ministry today, but you chose to worship with us, and for that we say thank you. We just ask you just to sit back, my God, and allow God to be God in your life as he is in ours. Amen? Let him do what he wants to do right where you are in the name of Jesus. Father, we want to thank you for you. We thank God for the advent, my God, of electronic media that we're able to reach people now that we never could reach before. The word is going forth throughout this whole world. And the one thing that the Lord spoke to me, and I'm not going to dwell on it long, when that little earthquake hit, my God, he says, get ready. He said, get ready. That's all he said, get ready. Because, see, New York State is under the illusion that nothing could touch us. <laughs> they don't know our God. <laughs> they don't know our God. It was a wake-up call. It was a wake-up call. 
And this word today is a wake up call. Wake up. Come out of your slumber. Wake up. Wake up. The time is drawing near. The time is drawing near. That's all he said. Get ready. Get ready. And I declare that was only the first one. There's going to be more. And each time it's going to be more than 4.8 or 4.7. Because every time it happens, the infrastructure gets weaker and weaker and weaker. It was said since 19, I think it was 1980 something. This was the 22nd earthquake in the eastern region. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Don't be fearful. Don't get fearful. This is the time to lean on the shoulders of your most high God. To know who he is. That he's in control. My God, truly he has given us a word. Please go to the book of Ephesians, chapter 14. Excuse me, Ephesians chapter 5, starting at verse 14, going down to verse number 20. Father, we thank you today. We just give you the glory and the honor and the praise, my Lord, for who you are. You are our Savior and our Redeemer and our way maker, the soon coming King. And we love you, Jesus. We love you. We love you more than anything in this world, my God, because there's nothing that could compare with you. We thank you for this people, my God. We thank you for this word that you have for thy people. And we stand on your word that it will go forth and it will accomplish that which you please. Thank you in advance, my Lord, for healing and delivering and setting free. Thanking you, my God, for clarity. I bind the spirit of confusion right now in Jesus' name. Every spirit that would try to interfere with your understanding, we bind it up now in Jesus' name. And we lose clarity in your house, dear God, that your purpose will be fulfilled today. In Jesus' name, amen. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14. Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep, <laughs> arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. <laughs> My God. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which the dissipation, My God, but be filled with the spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and in hymns and in spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. My God, okay. Maximize your time. Maximize your time. Maximize your time. Glory be to God. Maximize your time. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. You may sit down, please. Redeeming the time for the days are evil. What does redeem mean spiritually? Redemption is essential concept of many religions, including Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The term implies that something has been paid for or brought back, like a slave who has been set free through the payment of a ransom. Your time has been paid for, whether you realize it or not. And I'll give you the scripture on it. But redeeming the time. We, as a people, not just church folk, as a people, we waste a lot of time doing nothing. We waste a lot of time. Things that can't even benefit us, we pay attention to it. We waste a lot of time. I'm not even going to talk about the procrastinator. I'm talking about us as the people right now. We waste time. We waste time. And time is valuable. 
time is valuable. Time has been given to us by God for a purpose. And we waste time. We just waste it. We waste time allowing people to get on our last nerve. We waste time with that. When we know the scripture that our weapons are not warfare, of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. We know it. But yet and still we allow people to get on our last nerve. We take our time. Time. Time is valuable. And the word says today, redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. Buy back. That word redeem means to buy back the time. To buy back. To get back the time. Glory be to God. For us, redeeming the time means to improve your every moment. To make up for the time you lost while you was a sinner. Let me say it again. For us, redeeming the time means to improve every moment, to make up for the time that you were the sinner. How much time did you waste being a sinner? Huh? How much time did you waste? Hmm? <laughs> Glory be to God. Years ago, when I came to Christ, this is one thing I said to the Lord. And he's done it. I said, Lord, I was out there and doing what I was doing for 24 years. 24 years. I was drugging and doing what I was doing. I said, Lord, I want that 24 years to serve you and more. And God has given me more. I've been saved longer than I was out there doing drugs. And I thank God for that. Redeeming the time. Can you say that to yourself? Can you ask yourself that? The time that you spent being a sinner, has God granted you more time now that you've been saved? Not only has he granted you more time, you look better. You look better. You're not all wrinkled up, hung over. Because you know today, today is Sunday, right? Sunday was a recoup day. Especially if you had a job. If you didn't have no job, there was no recoup day. You just stayed high all the time. But God, but God, he beautifies you from the inner man out. From the inner man out. He restores you. He gives back that, the, that which the canker worm and the palmer worm and the caterpillar and the locust have tried to take from you. He restores. Redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. And that should be the focus of every child of God. That I want to do more for you now than I ever did before in my life. I want to improve everything that I'm doing for you, Lord. I'm redeeming the time. because I just, I just, This is about sin. As Paul comes to, to, through Ephesians 5, and I'll give it to you in a moment. But this is about sin. He's talking about sin and redeeming the time. That we don't have time to play. We don't have time to do foolishness. We don't have the time. We should redeem the time. Redeeming the time. Glory to make up for the time that you lost while you was a sinner. Jesus. <laughs> Ephesians 5, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, be imitators of God as, do, uh, as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us, and given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. This is how Paul starts out Ephesians chapter 5. Okay, that we should imitate our Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ, by loving one another. I was talking to two sisters earlier this morning inside the room while they were getting ready to pray. And I said, you all remember what Mother Millie used to say, you want to get to heaven, you better love everybody, you got to love me. And it's true. Don't think that you're going to get to heaven and you're still holding people. Don't think you're going to get to heaven when you're backbiting and gossiping. Don't think you're going to get there. You don't think that. You must have love, and not just that funny kind of love. The kind of love that our Lord and Savior has for us, that agape love. The kind of love that even though you did something to me, I still love you. Even though you abuse me, I still love you. And I still pray for you. I still want God to have his will in your life. 
and mean it from my heart. That's the kind of love. Love covers a multitude of sin, does it not? And many of God's children don't love like that. They don't. They don't. And you can tell it. You can tell it. Glory be to God. Because love is just not to be manifested inside these four walls. Love should be your constant companion. Seven days a week. You should be walking in love. This is what, you, what Paul is saying right here. Walking in love. Love can be felt. It can be felt. When you truly love somebody, they know that you love them. Love is also an action word. And because I love you, I'm going to do for you. Not because I have to, but because I love you. And it's a difference. It's a difference. Glory be to God. And then Paul goes on speaking about purity in the life. And he mentions six things that should not be a companion to our walk. Glory be to God. He mentions, but fornication and uncleanliness or covetedness, let it not be even named among you as is fitting for saints. Neither a filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor coarse jesting, we are not fitting, or which are not fitting, but rather giving thanks. For this you know, that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Now that's quite clear, is it not? Glory be to God. None of those can hang out with God. Fornica fornication. Fornication, sex, we're not married. Amen? Just giving yourself away. Giving yourself away. And the bad thing about it, when you give yourself away to whoever you give yourself to, after they get what they got, they're going to somebody else. Lord Jesus. Okay. This is for somebody watching me on YouTube right now. Okay. You got to be careful. You got to be careful. When we say walk around with a clean spirit, that's exactly what Paul is saying here. Make sure your spirit is clean. Make sure. Let none of these things hang out with you at night. Okay. Make sure. Then he goes on to say this. There are some secret things that happen that should not even be mentioned, in, shouldn't be mentioned. He says this, and he's talking about two functions that was going on among the people. Elimaeus and Bucetus are two kinds of glory be to God actions that the people were doing that were immoral. They were doing them at night, at night, and they were functioning with wine and women. And they was doing this, glory be to God, in a cave at night. They were worshiping at night. And it says they were so immoral that Paul says in Ephesians 5, can't even be mentioned. It was so bad that the Roman government outlawed it in Italy. Because Italy. they were walking around, not only at night with the, doing what they were doing, but they had plaques with naked people and doing immoral things on the plaques, walking around. Walking around. And see, saints who didn't know better were participating. Paul was getting it straight. And that's something as children of God, you better understand. Be careful what you associate with. Be careful. Things may look faintly and all right, but are you sure? That's why you have the Holy Spirit. You got to be careful who you're running with. Be careful who you tell people your dire secrets. Be careful who you give yourself over to. Be careful. Because you don't know what they're doing at night. Who they're talking to at night. The word says, they that do wickedness love the night. Those that do wrong like the night. Be careful, children of God. Who you run with, who you hang out with, Paul is enlightening these people. Say, so be careful. Be careful. What may look good is not all the time good. 
I don't care how fancy they can make okra. I still ain't going to eat it. Didn't like it when I was young and don't like it now. I just thought I'd say that. Because it used to look good. They had a way of fixing it up really nice. Really, especially down south. When I was working in downtown, yeah, they made it real nice. I couldn't eat that stuff. Slimy fall off the spoon and everything. Oh. Anyway, let's get back to the text. So it says, Paul's talking about, we are the children of the light. Oh, I love that. Jesus says the same thing that you have read this past week. In, G in John chapter 3, verses 20 and 21. For everyone who practices evil hates the light and does not come to the light. Least his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light. That his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. We are children of the light. And he goes on to say that because we are children of the light, we have the, my God, the power and the authority to expose darkness. It should be that when you and I enter into any room, darkness should be exposed. Because you are a child of God and we, my God, are in Christ Jesus, are we not? Wherever we go as children of light, we should be exposing darkness. That's why when you come into a room, people are cursing, and they see you, all of a sudden they stop cursing. Because it's respect, and be, not because of you, but because of who dwells inside of you. You are the children of the light. So where, again, wherever you go, darkness should be exposed. Should be exposed. But then there's a choice here. It could be exposed if you want it to be exposed. But sometimes, I hate to say, but children of God enjoy being around darkness. Uh-huh. Okay. Co-pastor and I had a joke. We said, yeah, this is the second time the lotto, that super lotto, whatever that thing was, the billion dollars, somebody got it. And she asked me, oh, did, did you buy the ticket? Did you buy the ticket? Because, see, I know some things. Don't look at nobody in here, but I know some things. They didn't buy it in their neighborhood. They went out of their neighborhood when nobody knows them and buy the ticket. And already advised, figured out in their mind, if I win, I'm going to tell them somebody just mailed me a ticket if they come back to church. Because so you can't tell me every child of God don't play that, 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 that lotto. You can't tell me that. Because I've seen them. Not nothing great as nine, but I've seen saints do it. I've seen them. <laughs> okay. Glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> So, and so I asked her the other day when, we, when my daughter and I came home from the city, I said, uh, that's why you stayed home, because you wanted to check the numbers, huh? <laughs> no, but we are the children of the light. And because we are children of the light, we should expose darkness. Talk, darkness should not be part of our character. Darkness should not hang out with us. We are called to expose it. To expose it. That's what Paul is saying in Ephesians 5. We expose the light. He says, awake. You who sleep. Arise from the dead. And Christ will give you light. That comes from Isaiah 61 and 2. Arise and shine. For your light has come. <laughs> oh God. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Wake up. That's what he's saying to the people. Wake up from the dead. Not dead physically, dead spiritually. 
That's what he's saying. You're dead spiritually. You cannot recognize what's going on. You don't recognize, my God, right from wrong, good from evil. You don't recognize spiritual things. You don't recognize a demon when it's talking to you right in your face. Smiling right in your face and you don't, you're agreeing, you're smiling too. Awake, you who are dead spiritually. This is what he's saying. After he explained that immoral practice that was going on. Because some of them will be a part of it. He's saying, now you got to wake up. You got to wake up from the dead. Rise and shine. Why rise and shine? Because you are the light. Jesus says there's another way in Matthew. A light or a candle shouldn't be hid under a bushel. It has to be seen. So he also is telling us that you have the capability of hiding your light. Like some saints say, when they get mad with you, I'm going to throw down my Christianity for a moment, get you told, and I'll pick it back up again. But whoever told that saint that they have a, the right, or they even have the season, or they even have the time to pick it back up again, that the Lord doesn't come or strike you right then while you, your hand is trying to pick it back up. There is a reason why Jesus says that. It shouldn't be hidden under a bush. There's a reason why. Because we have the capability of hiding who we are. We hide ourselves on our jobs. We hide ourselves in school. We hide ourselves to our neighbors. We hide ourselves. They know that you're a Christian on Sunday because they see the way you dress. But do they know it Monday through Saturday? Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. And you also see this is something that you have to do. Our Lord and Savior has already paid the price. Amen? He's telling us to rise and shine. Awake, and the Lord will give you light. You have to do this. You have to do this. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. He says, walk circumspectly. That means, see that you walk, my God, in such a way that you're not counted as a fool, but as a wise person. Walking circumspectly. Walking, my God, according to the calling that's upon your life. Walking according as a light. As a light. Not as darkness. Circumspectly. To walk about watching on every hand to avoid danger and enemies. Live the gospel by watching your conduct. That's walking circumspectly. Okay, let's say it again. To walk about and watching on every hand to avoid danger and your enemies. Live the gospel by watching your conduct. Just don't be a saint when people are looking at you. Because the time of you where your conduct is going to be put on blast or opened up is when people are not, you think people are not looking at you. It's like when you're in the supermarket and you're acting up. And someone's in the next aisle that knows that you're a Christian. Okay. You got to be careful. Or you're in the gas station getting gas. And for whatever reason, you start saying stuff that you shouldn't be saying. And someone on the next pump knows you. They know you. And you can put yourself in check by not saying anything. I was pumping gas one time. My daughter was in the car with me. I'm pumping gas. And here come a person wanting money, but that's not all. They had a lit cigarette in their hand. And I'm pumping gas. <laughs> you know? Now, I wanted to say something, but the Holy Spirit checked me. 
But I did tell them affirmly to get away from me. These kind of things. These kind of things. That you will be put to the test to see if you're walking circumspectly. When you're unaware, when you're un like David, when he was unaware, it was time to go to war, he didn't go. These kind of things. Don't be smiling at me, y'all, because some of y'all be caught out like that. When you're unaware, that's when you get tested. You're not going to get tested now because you've been here praising God and clapping your hand and doing all kind of good stuff. But what about when you leave out of here? When you get out of here. See, in here is where you get prepared for the week. So this word is for the week. And I guarantee you, some of you are going to get tested this week. I guarantee you. When you're unaware, when your mind is not on nothing, and some boom, it happens. Then he says, redeeming the times, because the days are evil. Do you agree with the days are evil? But he still tells us to redeem the time. What does that mean? It means, number one, to seek God in the present. To seek God in the present. Number one, seek him in the present. Number two, pursue what has eternal value. Pursue what has eternal value. I'll read these again to you. Number three, avoid what isn't worth our time. Ask God, will this move me closer to God or farther away? That which you are doing, is it moving you closer to God or is it pushing you farther away? Do as much good as we can in the time we have available. Okay, I'll go back now. One, seek God in the present. Two, pursue what has eternal value. What has eternal value? Glory be to God. Three, avoid what isn't worth our time. Ask God, will this move me closer to God or further away? Do as much good as we can in the time we have available. Redeeming the time. Psalm 90 and 12 says, So teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. My God. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Hmm. Glory be to Psalms 139 and 16 says, Your eyes saw my substance, being yet unformed. And in your book, they were all written. The days fashioned for me, when as yet there were none of them. Your days are numbered. My days are numbered. So by redeeming the time, we don't lose track. Amen? We want to do all that God wants, has, has put in the book for us, as Psalms 139, 16 says. We want to cross every T and dot every I. Amen? We don't want to leave things undone that we should have been done when God has given us the time to do it. But because we were so preoccupied with things that did not have any eternal value. Okay. That didn't have any eternal value. We got to be preoccupied with it. And we're losing track, losing time. We're losing time. God has given us all a certain amount of time to be on this earth. Amen? And don't you want to accomplish all that God has for you? That you can hear our Lord and Savior, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Now enter into my rest. Don't you want to hear that? When he opens up the book, like it says in 139, 
Okay, you did that one, you did that one. Oh, but you left this, 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 this. I don't want my unchecks to outnumber my checks. Does that make sense to you? Okay. I want my checks to unmark, <laughs> to outnumber my unchecks. I do. I want to, this is why God has given us the time to redeem the time, to get back the things that we have not done. And there's nobody sitting in here that has been obedient every moment where God told you to do something. If you are in here and you say you did, you're lying. There are times where you say, this ain't God. There are times you have even rebuked the Holy Spirit because he didn't agree with what you wanted to do. Because it interfered with your time. But it's not your time. It's God's time that he has given you to do what he wants you to do. That's why it says redeem the time. Why? Because the days are evil. People are dying out there. People are dying. And how many people have walked by, this, by us on the street and we decided to cross the street instead of saying Jesus loves you? The days are evil, but he has given us the capacity, the time, because we are the light. You cannot pick and choose which way you want to go sometime. There are times the Holy Spirit is going to tell you, go this way. He's going to tell you. He's going to tell you why you're sitting down at a restaurant. Go pay for that food over there. Or your supermarket, pay for their food. It happens. This is the light to show people that there is a Savior. That we just don't come to church, my God, on Sunday for, for nothing. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 9, 24. Therefore, do, you not, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. What is the will of the Lord? That none should perish, but that all should come unto repentance. That's one of his wills. Amen? Now, we know without a shadow of a doubt, not everybody is going to receive Christ. But that's not our choice. We should align our will with God's will. If God's will is that none should perish, all should come to repentance, that should be our will too. You and I can't save anybody. But we can align our will with the Lord's will. And he goes on to say, be not be drunk with wine and be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord and giving thanks for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Singing to yourself in psalms and hymns, making melody in your heart. Amen. Because if you're singing psalms, the word of the Lord, because if you didn't know it, all the psalms were sung. They were sung. They were not quoted verbatim, verbatim. They were sung. On different occasions, they were sung. And hymns and melodies in your heart. There's no way in the world you could be singing the word of the Lord and be nasty. There's no way. Does that make sense to you? This is why Paul is saying this. If you make a melody in your heart and you're singing the word of the Lord and hymns, glory be to you, you cannot be anything but that light that God wants us to be. But sometimes we replace those songs and hymns with foolishness. What you hear in your head will dictate how you, your character is. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it comes the issues of life. That's what the word says. That's why it's important to young people that you be careful what you listen to. The rapper 
who listen to that. Let me be nice. Listen to that stuff. The Crips and the Bloods say, and gang members, before they go out and do what they do, they listen to some certain rap music. Because in that rap music dictates what they're going to do. As they're getting high, they listen to this music. So they are fueling their self. They're fueling their self. We should be fueling ourselves also. There we go. By psalms and hymns and making melodies in our heart. God does not care if you can't sing. He does not care. What he does care about is you make a melody in your heart to him. He doesn't say that you have to be melodious. He does not say that. Because you're not singing to people, you're singing to him. The Lord let me know a long time ago. Up here. Our former pastor was alive. <laughs> and I told some people, continue to sing. Because people were telling them to shut up. That's a demon. That's a demon trying to make somebody shut up. And people will look at you funny because you can't sing. That's the, fine, sing louder. Because you're not singing to them. You're singing to God. I don't care what they say. If they're so talented, why are they not singing? But the adversary will use whoever is open to him in whatever circumstance, right in the church. This is why Paul was telling them, be awake. Begin to recognize what's going on. Don't be oblivious to everything. Don't take everything as being right. No one is all the time right. And you are right sometimes, you know. You're not stupid. But people will have a way of making you feel like that. You have to, glory be to God, understand who you belong to. You belong to Jesus Christ. And he's telling us to maximize your time. Don't let your time just float away. Don't let it just float away and you miss the mark. Because you was listening to other stuff. Being preoccupied. Don't be like those who, in the world who say, I wish I would have. I wish I'd have went to college. I wish I didn't marry this one and that and over and over again. Why don't they redeem the time? Still, as long as you got breath, you can go to college. Care how old you are. I don't know what that was for, but anyway. Maximize your time. Prioritize your time. What should have the priority? Things that have eternal value. Ask yourself the question, will this that I am doing now move me closer to God or further away from God? Ask yourself the questions. And many times, you're going to get an answer that you don't like. Because the thing that you're asking God that for, you enjoy doing. And God has a way of making you not do what you enjoy doing and do, doing what he wants you to do. So the thing that you enjoy doing may not be what God wants you to do. Because the thing that you are doing, you are comfortable with. God wants to get you out of that and make you uncomfortable and do his will. So he can bless you. Maximize your time. Prioritize your time. If you got to get a memo book and start writing stuff down, do it. Make things that are, that are important to you that have eternal value. Put them things first. What matters? What matters? What is stealing your time? What is taking your time? What are you paying more attention to that have no eternal value? That has no e value at all. I'm not talking about you and family. I'm talking about you personally. Because when you close your eyes, family ain't going with you. 
You go on by yourself. So ask yourself, what I'm doing, does it have any eternal value? Am I going to make it? Am I going to see him face to face? Ask yourself the question. Maximize your time. Children of God, many of us are time wasters. We're time wasters. We waste time. Only to find out after you have done what you was doing, you haven't done nothing. You haven't done nothing. Glory to God. It didn't benefit nothing. You spent hours doing this and it didn't benefit nothing. Hours. Maximize your time. Prioritize what you're going to do. The clothes don't got to be washed every day. Spend some of that time getting in the word of the Lord and praying. Making phone calls to the saints and seeing how you're doing. Praying for them. Some things, glory to, you, glory to God, can be put on the back burner. Everything is not expedient to be done right now. We make it expedient. But they're not. If the dishes are not washed at night, does it make a difference? They're still going to be in the sink in the morning. Or you'd be like some of us who don't use plates no more. We use paper plates. They go right in the garbage. You ain't got to worry about washing them. <laughs> oh, my boy up there, he's in agreement, huh? So we see, children of God, maximizing your time, prioritizing your time. Your time is valuable. Your time is valuable. It really is. It's valuable because God has given you the time. I gave it to you. Psalm 90 and 12. God has given you the time. Psalm 139 and 16. Psalm, God has given you the time. It's not your time. This is God's time. It's God's time. And he wants you to maximize the time that he has given you for eternal value. This is what's going to lead you to him. When you're maximizing your time. Think about the things in your head that really don't have no value to you. What are you doing that have no eternal value whatsoever? What are you doing? Is it leading you closer to God or further away from God? Because if it has no value, the question is, it's taking you further from God. If you're spending more time doing something that has nothing to do with eternal value. I'm talking spiritually now. Spiritually. I know there are some things that we have to do in the natural, sure. But what takes up more time in your day? What's the first thing that you do in the morning? Mm, people say, mm, now, okay. What's the first thing that you do in the morning? Okay. Or do you got to go wipe the, the, the things out your eyes and brush your teeth and put your clothes on? Because all that is not maximizing your time. There's no place in the word of God that I see that God says to his children, before you come to me and pray, I want you to take a shower. I want you to brush your teeth. I want you to put your clothes on. Get ready to go out. Then you come pray. I don't see that in God's word. But what I do, say is, I do, what I do see is this. I seek you early. Early will I seek you. Is that what the word says? Early will I seek you. I will seek your face. Early. God has gifted me with the opportunity that I can have the TV on and still study it. I don't even hear the TV. And one of my daughters has picked that up. I have, it, I have it on, but I don't, hear, I don't see it. I see it, but I don't hear it because my mind is in the word. It's in the word. 
That's just me. Everybody has their own way of doing things. But what you are doing, it does it have any value? What are you learning from it? What are you learning? What are you learning? What? Does it have any value? Ask yourself the question and some of the things that you're doing. The word comes today is redeem the time. Maximize your time. Because the days are evil. And saints, the days are not going to get less evil. They're going to get more evil. The arsenal of the adversary is being poured out on the earth. It's being poured out. The days are evil. Maximize your time. We are called to be the light. We are called to expose sin. That's what this is about. We are called to expose sin and not be a partaker of it. This is what the word says today. To maximize your time. Don't let things just corrupt you. Don't let things just overwhelm you that don't have any eternal value. Stand to your feet, please. Maximize your time. Awake, you that sleep. Awake. Where it says that the blind will lead the blind, and they both will walk into a ditch. Awake. Arise and shine. The glory of the Lord shine upon you. Awake. Open up your spiritual eyes. See what God is trying to show you. Awake. Maximize your time. Maximize your time. It means that you got to spend more time in his presence and know him even better. Do so. If that is your desire, and that should be our desire, to know him better. Amen? Maximize your time. Cut out all the arguing and all the bickering and all the foolishness that's snatching your time. Elevating your blood pressure. Makes no sense. Why don't you do the things that's going to bring peace to your spirit? Singing songs and hymns and melodies in your heart. That gives you peace in the midst of a storm. Amen? Singing the word of the Lord to yourself when things are going crazy around you. But you got a song in your spirit. I got a song. I got a song. I got a song. Anybody got a song in here in their spirit? Glory to God. When all hell is breaking out, you got a song in your spirit that's giving you peace in the midst of your situation. That helps to calm the sea where you are right now. Gives you that peace that surpasses all understanding. Like that woman said, whose son was dying, it is well with me. And the song said, it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well. It is well with my soul. I got a song in my spirit. And everything around me wants to cave in. I got a song in my spirit. Psalm says, I have the psalms surround you with deliverance. Songs of deliverance. Songs of deliverance. But you have songs that you can sing to yourself that can deliver you out of the midst of your situation. And even though you're going through it, you're going through it in peace and not in turmoil. Because you got a song in your spirit. You can sing to yourself. Sing to yourself. And God will give you a song. God will give you a song. Oh, yes, He will. 
But you got to maximize your time with him spiritually. Because the days are evil, and again, they're not going to get any better. They're not. Don't fool yourself, they're not. But we are the light. We are the light. We are the victorious ones. We have the authority and the power that has been given to us by Jesus Christ. That we can walk into any situation and be a calming influence. We can be a calming influence in any situation because we are alike. We shouldn't be a partaker of the dumbness. We should be the one that corrects it. Maximize the time. Maximize your time. Maximize your time. If you have been a time waster, this altar is open. If this word is for you, this altar is open. If you know that you have not maximized your time, if you know you have not prioritized your time, that you have allowed things to steal your time from you, this altar is open. Again, redeem means to buy back, to bring it back. That's the Greek interpretation of redeem. Come back, bring it back. Glory to God. Maximize your time. Maximize your time. Ask God to help you and show you the areas where you, glory to God, are losing time.
bless you, Lord. Oh, come on and bless him in the house. God is not finished yet. There's some more deliverances in this house. Jesus. My God. I dare you to open your mouth in here and praise. I dare you to open your mouth and praise God in here. I dare you to open your mouth. I dare you, I dare you, I dare you, open your mouth and praise Him. Glory be to God. I dare you. Jesus. Glory to God. Jesus. to be praised. God is great and greatly to be praised. God is great and greatly to be praised. Glory to God. Heaven and earth adore him. Glory be to God. And we bless him today. We bless him today. For he has done marvelous things. And is doing marvelous things. He is crushing the devices of the adversary. He's showing himself mighty on behalf of his children. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our sight. This is the Lord's doing. This is the Lord's doing. This is the Lord's doing. 